So about a year ago, one of my good friends who's also on SPEMA, uh, you might know him as Dowie, he did a, his very first broad talks here at Bob and his organization. And from that day, it's really inspired me to do a talk. But the real question was, what talk do I want to do it on? There's so many things I could talk about. I could talk about my love for sports, which I will tonight. I could talk about you know, things I've accomplished in life. But I really want to do something that's passionate to me and will have you know, a great impact for everyone here and everyone abroad. About 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with a mental health disorder known as Tourette's syndrome. And I want to share with you tonight my personal story, triumphs, some downfalls, some negatives, and how I got to where I am today. So first off, a little exercise. I want you to think of a time when you might have felt hopeless. Maybe you were criticized and ostracized. Perhaps you were bullied or embarrassed. Or you didn't believe in yourself. I can think of a time back when I was in middle school when, um, and you gotta understand, the mental health back then didn't have as much awareness as it does now. So it's a different time. When kids were, would bully me or say things to me that I didn't really appreciate. But those are different times than what they are now. So, my goal for this presentation is first of all, educate you on threats and mental health disorders. Uh, to motivate you to take that first step to achieving your goals and to aspire you to take action. And funny enough, as I constructed these goals for this speech, I realized these are the same things, the same purpose of Rocky Talks. The mini conference that aims to inspire, motivate, and spark positive change. And that's what I hope to accomplish as well. So first of all, who am I? <laughs> well, as I was introduced, I'm a third year sport management student here at Rock, of course. I'm also a co-president of Schema Council or Sport Management Council. And something my friends will probably know about me, I am a comic book junkie. So during intermission or after tonight, you want to talk to me about comic books? We can have a little chat as well. <laughs> I don't profess to know everything about the world of comic books, but I know enough to have a conversation. So, what is Tourette's in? Well, these are my words. These are straight from the National Institute of Neurological Disease and Stroke. Tourette's syndrome is a neurological disorder characterized by repetitive and voluntary movement and vocalizations called things. It's a complex disorder that's characterized by abnormality in certain brain regions. Some additional disorders that come with threats, it doesn't happen to everybody, is OCD, also known as obsessive compulsive disorder, and anxiety. And with threats, there's no real effective treatment. And I put effective in quotes for a reason. There are medications for threats, however, there's sedatives. The word that I would like to put there is there's no natural, there, sorry, there is natural treatment, there isn't anything that's as really effective. And that's where my story of sports come in, because it helped allow me to control the Some of the tips that I suffer from is eye blinking, throat clearing, and head shaking. Those are the things I suffer from. And sometimes I do get anxious. So my personal story. I guess it starts off back in November 28, 1991, born to my parents, Jane and Joe. I had to throw a couple baby pictures in there. <laughs> but when I was a kid, my parents know something. Something that wasn't, you know, honestly, no one no wasn't the right word, just something a little, little off. Uh, they noticed that I would blink my eyes a lot. And they'd always pass it to the wayside thinking that, oh, it's just allergies, it's just uh, his eyes are really dry. And, and, you know, I didn't think anything as well. You know, I was eight years old and I didn't know much either. Am I supposed to know what threats in them is? No. <laughs> Like I said, there was a lack of mental health awareness back 10 years ago as there is now. When I was in middle school, um, I was sort of developing new tics. My eye blinking, of course, was one of them, and then I started uh, cleaning my throat. Um, the middle school I went to was in Toronto, in the East End. It was called Duke of Canal. And one thing you should know about Duke, and funny enough, my mom actually went to that school as well in middle school. Um, it's not the greatest, wasn't the greatest neighborhood as it was now. I have to admit, there were a lot of kids there that were also troubled, and a lot of them were drug dealers as well. You had 13, 12 year old drug dealers. <laughs> the worst thing someone said to me when I was in middle school, and uh, they asked me why I'm clearing my throat, I said, Well, I have Tourette's in my And they said to me, Ew, is that contagious? 
That was the worst thing someone's ever said. It was about middle school when my mom started thinking that I might have had Tourette's, and I didn't really know even what that was. She popped up one day on my laptop and typed it in, and I looked it over. I didn't really know what it meant. It was just I saw big words that 13 year old probably wouldn't know, but it, it struck me. You can say when I was in middle school, a lot of the tests were forward to the stand up to what people were saying. When I was 13, and this was about the first year when I was in high school, I was, like, I was officially diagnosed with mild Tourette's. And I say mild because Tourette's can be on a scale from mild to severe. And some of you may notice that people that have severe Tourette's are the ones that showed up scenes. Swear words, racial slurs, those kind of things. That's on the extreme end, where there isn't so much control. And one thing I should say about Tourette's is the feeling people that have Tourette's is like this impulse or this urge to just, you know, I don't know, say something, right? It's that feeling that you just have to get out. It. You can control it, but then you just have to get it out. That's what Tourette's syndrome is. And that's really a severe end, whereas I saw it's a mild version of it. And there might be some of you that don't, might not notice what kind of things. That's perfectly normal as well. And there's some that do, but I understand there's more awareness as it is today. My friend's gonna kill me if he sees this. <laughs> I was talking on the phone with my friend last night. I said, there's going to be a couple of photos on there for you. And he's like, ah, I should be fine. No, just hold it. So uh, one of my good friends, Richard, on the, uh, the uh, top right there, and on the bottom left with my friends back home in Toronto. These are my friends I grew up since I was in kindergarten. Some from middle school as well. Not in front of the <laughs> These are what I consider really close friends, very support friends. They support everything I've done since they've known me, really, since those days in kindergarten. They've always been at my side no matter what. And I didn't want you to think that in middle school, when people said things to me, that I was always the one that was thrown in the locker. Because that never happened, of course. I always had friends at my side that would defend me and always back me up. I consider these friends brothers to me. That's how close they are. When I was in high school, I really started to uh, find my talents in sports. I used to be a former runner, and I competed cross country and track field every year. And I always played sports just for fun. I always enjoyed it. That feeling of competitiveness, playing with your friends, always trying to win, it's something I enjoy. It just it was just second age for me to play appreciate the sports. There's one thing my parents noticed when I was playing sports. They noticed that my kicks would go down. And the reason behind it is that there is actually scientific proof of this injustice, is because I was focused. I had a, a task in mind. I had to run a lap, for example, or I was so focused on scoring a goal and hockey. That's what I was focused on. And you know, my kicks would go down. And it, I just, I didn't do sport just for that reason. That was just a bonus. I did sport because I love sport. The thrill of it, the anticipation of it. So much to the point that I even was a personal trainer. After high school, I did two years at George Brown College doing my fitness uh, diploma, preparing me for a personal training job. I worked at a gym called Body and Soul Fitness from 2011 to 2013, a gym in Toronto. This is where I really took my love of sport and exercise, and I could use it to help people, help them transform their body, help them achieve their goals. I used to enjoy working with runners. They were my favorite clientele because I knew where their head was at. I knew what they wanted to achieve. They wanted to run this time in a marathon or a half marathon. Whatever it be. I also worked with clients that wanted to lose weight, or clients that came from uh, physiotherapy or, or that came out of some sort of injury or, or rehab. I worked with a wide range of clientele, but the, there was one common thing they all had goals. They all, they, all, they all had something they wanted to achieve, and that's what my job was. It wasn't so much a job, it was my passion. I enjoyed seeing a smile on the face of a client achieve their goals. Nothing could trade that. And now I'm here at the Broad University. And I enjoyed personal training. I really did. My friends would say that I was a fitness group, per se. I don't think so, but I enjoyed fitness. But it came a time where I wanted to do something else. I'm very bored, so I get bored when I, just, when I want to do something else. And that's where it came time to realize that, you know, if I go somewhere for my life, I need to pursue a high level education. But I just want to do any program just for the sake of doing a program. I could have done something else if I wanted to, but I have to have a purpose. 
I told my friends this. I was actually going to go to Windsor to do kinesiology there and master, sorry, major in sport management. And then I found Rock. They had a sport management program there. Corona specializes in the business side of sports. And I'm happy to be here. So here I am now. I was a former provincial and national cross country track and field athlete. I ran at George Brown College, and I also ran for my club in Toronto, Toronto Olympic Club. These were great times. I made a lot of friends, a lot of close friends, and I also had an opportunity to be the best I could possibly be. I'm glad to say I could run a mile. Not today, though. A few years ago, in under five minutes. Now, <laughs> yeah, not so much. <laughs> Like I said, I help clients achieve their goals. The thrill of seeing clients face light up and them achieving their goals, and I would never trade that in. Down here, these are some of my close friends that I work with at Body and Soul Fitness. That was us during Halloween. Um, bottom right there, one of my good friends from Jordan Brown, Bass. Uh, we were good buddies in college. We all would be very like minded. We had similar goals, but always just wanting to help people and be the best people. If I could say there's one person that got me really seriously in the way that thing, it was definitely him. And Toastmasters, a place where I really developed my communication skills and my leadership skills. This is the place that actually, when I was working at Body and Soul Fitness, that my mentor suggested that I attend. Because one thing I really lacked a few people was communicating people, understanding people, not so much selling people, but so much communicating people and understanding people. I'm glad to say Toastmasters has really changed my perspective and my and lastly, sport management counseling. I'm really proud to say, and I know one of my friends, in the, two of my friends in the back, actually three here, and they're all here, good for them. <laughs> Mitch, if you need the lead, thank you for coming. Uh, I got to work with some really talented gentlemen this year, and, and ladies as well, um, throughout this year. And we did things that we never thought we would do. It didn't take one person to do this, it was a group effort. We all worked together to achieve things that we never thought we took. As I look at these photos, they're not really just goals of me. They're memories and they're accomplishments. Saying that we were able to plan a trip to go watch the Toronto Raptors, that we were able to host the very first sport conference at Brock University, it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Throughout my life, there are some things I've had to reflect on. Like I said, there are some downfalls. Trying what people said things we had to in middle school and as my life progressed. Three things I really value in my life is honesty, loyalty, and respect. Honesty in that you're always truthful to people you care about. Loyalty, always at somebody's side. And respect, well, treating others the way you want to be treated. Love yourself. The most important thing to achieving any of your goals is to love yourself. If you, if you don't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? Be proud of who you are no matter what. I wake up every morning. Thinking, how am I going to be better today? How am I going to be better today than I was yesterday? Coming to Brock Talks? Talks? Definitely not. <laughs> Hard work and determination and willpower. I put willpower in practice because it took a lot of willpower or a test of fortitude to overcome things people said to me when I was growing up. I believe the work, whatever you put, whatever you get out is what you put in, but what you get in is what you put out. That's what I believe. Some closing thoughts. I want to leave you two quotes that I really that have a personal connection with me. The first one at um, my uh, MFA school that I attend, you may or not see it, but I'll read it We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, that is not an act, but a habit. Meaning that to be better, for example, it's just not, it's not an act, it's always a habit. Constantly doing it over and over again. One of my favorite quotes, from Lao Tzu is a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Thank you.